Uh, Kate here. Uh, got a question on Facebook. Uh, I'll put a link below the video uh, to my Facebook, the RetainerDesigner.com uh, Facebook group, uh, where you can ask me questions. And I thought I'd make a video be easier to answer this question. So this is from Tiffany. Hi, I'm curious to know how you prep your models before fabricating acrylic retainers. We are having problems with acrylic lifting and air bubbles forming while curing in the pressure pot. I'd also like to know how, what like to know what kind of brand of acrylic you use to make your retainers. I love the work you do. Thanks. Well, thanks, Tiffany. Okay, so regarding the work, how I prep these, uh, I'm in a my little cage here. Um, I'm just going to kind of go through the whole thing just you know so I don't miss anything in case someone else has another question. I think mainly your Tiffany what you're talking about was for, you know, what kind of separator I use or, or what do I use. Uh but to prep these I'll, I'll go ahead and tell you what we do. In our lab we uh CDTs prep all the cases before they go to the wire techs. So we read the doctor's script and then we transpose it to the model. And then using certain, I'll show you in a little bit, uh, marks and stuff on the model, we tell the, the wire bender what to do. So in this case, this, this is for a retainer, a holly, uh, with soldered C's on the bicuspids. So what we like to do is go ahead and clean this out right here so that the wire, zoom in on that, so that the wire will lay in there real nice. And of course, uh, you don't have any bubbles or anything to worry about. Now to tell the, let me get my pencil here. Now to tell what the wire bender to do is for, we use these little red and blue pencils. Red, blue we use for wires. Red we use for like acrylic or to call attention to something. Um, so I'll draw here and here. All right. And I'll draw the labial bow. Okay, so that tells, if I draw a straight line from three to three, uh, that tells the wire bender to make the usual loops at the canines. Uh, anytime, if it's two to two or four to four, then we draw the loops where we want them but if we don't draw any loops and we've marked it from three to three that means just make a render of three to three labial bow so then the next thing i do is i'll probably i'm not at my usual station uh because i left my phone holder at home uh but i'll wax the undercuts a little bit and then i'll show you what i do next okay so i've waxed the undercuts or any of the problem I think is going to be a problem area uh, and then I use separator is my next step and so I'll go ahead and use separator before I send it to the wire bender uh, we use JBC's best ever separator 704 this is also where we get our acrylic from uh, so we have this little thing that she invented where uh, has a already has a brush on it so you put a little few drops you usually do about three or so, and you paint it in. So as you can tell, I prep a lot of them. I mean, this is just a little sample going. Uh, like these are all uh, wraps right here in the middle, and these are hollies. And I see, so we already we already reset the teeth for the wire bender. Uh, I reset the teeth here um, and then I draw like here's a wrap around you gotta be careful not to show the back so there's a wrap and it goes all the way around this is a wrap around solder to seize so we have little markings here that tells the wire bender what to do so all these have been painted once and what JBC recommends is so what JBC recommends is uh, spread it evenly with a soft brush. Apply two coats to achieve a dry, shiny surface. Allow each coat to dry thoroughly. So as you saw on my, my table over there, okay, so as you saw on my table over there, um, 
they all had one coat of of separator, so allowed all to dry, all to dry as I'm prepping all the other cases. And then I'll come back and I can paint again. But let me show you what we do after we get it back. Okay, so here are some models that we got back from the wire bender. Um, as you can see, I've done certain, the same drawings. I do a certain drawing for Adams. Uh, and what they use is a type of separator with 50, 50 this is a nasty bottle <laughs> you can tell it's been used but they use that separator and they apply a couple of drops and they use a nice soft paintbrush and paint another coat on right before they do the acrylic uh, and that really helps put a nice shine underneath the retainers okay one last thing I almost forgot we use owl coat for that second or third um, coat of separator and we use see how, you can see how thick it is we use this a half and half with this and water um, in our little dispenser so that's what we use it but you can just get away with the JBC separator just put two coats on it this just seems to help us it because uh, we got a wire bender at home and we need to apply a second coat when it comes in or a, like a refresher coat uh, this you can get on the wires at and it won't bother it. JBC, you don't want that on the wire. It's silicone based. Uh, and it'll, it'll just cause problems if you get it on the wires. Okay, these aren't cleaned up all the way. These are ready for pumice. Uh, and they haven't been steam cleaned yet, but as you can see, it puts in a real nice glossy surface on the, on the inside. So let's talk pressure pot. So, as you can see, here's our acrylic station with all of our JBC colors on there. Uh, be sure and talk to Priscilla, she'll she'll uh, help you choose. Uh, they, she has a nice kit, a nice starter kit with all of her main colors. But here's our pressure pot. It's good old Great Lakes uh, already has a, a heater built in and a pressure regulator so all you have to do is just turn it on. Uh, even if your pot is leaking it will maintain the exact pressure. So what we have done, and I think, Tiffany, what you're having a hard time with, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, is uh, you're putting the, wa the models, you're submerging them in the water while they're dry. So you're doing the acrylic, and then as you come by, you're submerging them in the water. I could be wrong, but that's where I think you're getting probably a lot of your bubbles and what your acrylic lifting. And I'll show you why. So here's a, a dry model. This one that I picked up. Let's see if I can zoom in there. You see those bubbles coming off of it? This is what happens, see, how, see the bubbles? You never know where they're gonna escape at, right? So that's gonna be bubbling through your wet acrylic, okay? So that's why you might be getting some big bubbles. All right, so one thing that we have done Another method is called the steam method, and you get some sort of platform in there. So we have an old coffee cup, and we just turned it upside down. And when we pour the acrylic or, or sprinkle the acrylic, we, we do it on a dry model. So let me take that back. Okay, so let's start over. You can do this method if you want, the, the submerged method. It really does a good, not, a nice job curing... The models but you're gonna have to soak the models first okay so let's say you have if you want to do the submerge method uh, you need to soak the models thoroughly before you put the acrylic on so that when you put it in the water all the air has already come out of the model so what you need to do is just get a little bit of water in a pan you can see it's just a little bit of water put your model in there and you can, I'll come back in a minute, then you can kind of see right where that, see how it's easing up? It's called capillary action, which means that that water is being sucked up through the stone through the bottom. That's the key. The, you want to soak up the water through the bottom so that it forces air out through the top. So any air that's trapped in there will, will be replaced with water. Alright, and so as it 
bubbles out, it'll bubble out here. Now I do have this a little, you don't, you don't want it going into the palette like that. There. And watch that capillary action. So sometimes it depends on the stone. Sometimes it only takes like five or ten minutes. So you can work it into your system before you uh, sprinkle where you're soaking them for a little bit. Uh, uh, I believe uh, if you have painted this many days before you sprinkle it, um, Priscilla at JBC has recommended just getting a pan like this and dipping them like that and setting them and let that water work all that all the air bubbles out see it's still doing the capillary action see how much it's risen up that's what you want to see and so you know the whole thing is perfectly wet all right so then that's when you can use a submerge now the method we use is a hybrid of that and that's where this cup comes into place let me zoom out a little bit Okay, so this is how it works. Let's pretend there's acrylic on here. You put it on the cup. Let's see if I can do this one handed. Okay. Okay, so, and you pressurize it. And then you go, you grab your next one, you start, uh, grab your next one. And you start sprinkling. You you sprinkle. You do two or three at a time. And so when you are ready to put it back in the pot, this has already got its initial set, right? Just from being in a pressure pot. So then you take this, then submerge it, and put your next one on here. See all the air bubbles coming out of that thing? Big old air bubbles. I hope I don't drop my phone in the water. Okay, so, and then you go to the next one. Does that make sense? <laughs> Hopefully it does. And so, when you do your third one, you'll go in here and you can either leave them all in there and let them really deep soak in, in the water while the acrylics finish curing, or you can pull it out and start taking it apart, put that one in, take your next model, and then put it on the cup and just keep going. All right? Okay, so just to recap, there's two methods of curing acrylic, all right? There is the steam method where the model never touches the water. It's on a dry platform inside. There still needs to be water in there for, uh, for moisture's sake, I guess, uh, and for heat and, and building the pressure in the pressure pot. Uh, and then there's a soak method. If you use the soak method, you must pre-soak your model before you sprinkle the acrylic or else the bubbles in the dry model will bubble up through. Uh, and also, you run the risk of that method, you run the risk of the acrylic separating from the, uh, from the model uh, and floating up in the water. And also be careful if you're cutting your acrylic with a knife that when you cut it and it's at a dry stage or rubbery stage and you go to peel that, you don't peel it away from the model. You want it, you want it to be sealed in there. You want that acrylic to be sealed up against it. All right. So you see, this didn't take long. I mean, it's, it's almost ready to go. You just got a couple dry spots in there. So now if I drop this in the water, it should not bubble. So I don't see any bubbles coming out of there. Okay. So, and to recap what we do, we do a hybrid method. We do not soak them before we sprinkle. We just go straight to sprinkling. We do use a little, let me see if I can find this separator for you. Uh, we use this separator, 50-50 mixture of separator and water. So that adds a little moisture to it uh, before we start sprinkling. But then we put it on the dry cup and then we move it to the water after initial set, after the acrylic's hard enough to where it, 
the bubbles will not go through it. It's not, it's not soft anymore. Okay, so your next question is what acrylic do we use? We use uh, JBC acrylic. Uh, you can go to jbcandcompany.com uh, and look at their site. They got a nice site. And then here is a color card you can get. You can get a kit that I believe has all these colors on it. And I kind of like this card because you see my fingers out see-through. So all their see-through colors are actually see-through when you hold this thing up to the light. And then they're glow in the dark. I don't think this actually glows in the dark, but she's got it to where it it's opaque. So I really like the colors. They're deep and they're rich. Um, the, the kids really like it. And that's what we use. Okay, Tiffany and other guys and gals, I hope that helps answer any of your questions. If you have any more questions, just uh, leave a comment below or go to my Facebook page. The retainer, just look up retainerdesigner.com in Facebook and you should find me. Thanks a lot. Bye for now.